Now we come to the market supply curve. And in this chapter, what we do is to construct the market supply curve for a certain good based on the supply curves of the individual goods that operate in this market. This is now again analogous to the construction of the market demand curve for um, the demand functions. And here we depict the supply curve of firm A. That's the same supply curve we had in the previous chapter. The price is on the vertical axis and the quantity supplied on the horizontal axis. Now we again use an uppercase Q here. And firm A has an upward sloping supply curve. Now there is a second firm, firm B, that has this supply curve here, uh, which would imply that actually firm B faces a um, uh, higher fixed cost, so it would uh, produce only for a higher price level here, and perhaps even higher operating uh, costs because uh, the supply curve is uh, steeper. Now if we add these two horizontally, we would get the market supply curve. Up to this point here, only firm A supplies, and if the price exceeds this point, firm B would also supply, and we would get um, this um, supply curve here. So again, we can go more into the details um, of this uh, aggregation, and here we have the quantity supplied by firm B for a hypothetical price level here of this uh, level P, and this firm would then supply a quantity um, Q of B here. Firm A would supply a quantity Q of A here, and if we add them together horizontally, we would get total supply of these two firms, which uh, we assume uh, are the whole market. So that would be the quantity of firm A plus firm B. And of course, in reality, the markets would um, again consist of uh, many different firms, typically, uh, except for monopolies or oligopolies. Again, as before, we can have movements along the curve. So if we assume a certain price level P1, then output would be a Q1. Only the firm A would produce in this particular case. And if the price increases then to P2, we would get a quantity Q2 in the market and firm B would also uh, be operating. Again, we can also have a shift of the curve if the cost structure changes for at least one firm. And this case that is depicted here would be that the costs uh, decrease for the firm and therefore the market supply curve would shift to the right. For a certain price level, P1, we would then have a higher uh, supply level here of uh, Q2, actually, which is higher than Q1. A realistic market supply curve would then again be non-linear and upward sloping, so it would be rather flat here for low price levels and then become steeper and steeper because initially for price increases it may be um, easier for firms to enter the market or to expand production, but it becomes more and more difficult the more firms already operate um, and um, the more uh, each particular firm already supplies on the market. So we can summarize what we've learned here, that the market supply curves are uh, depicting the overall quantity that is supplied by all the firms in a certain market. So it's the sum of the quantity supplied by the individual firms. If the price changes, we have a movement along the curve. If the cost structure changes, we have a shift of the curve. And again, uh, realistic supply functions would be nonlinear, rather flat at lower price levels and becoming steeper at higher price levels.